Paul, it's a pleasure to be sitting here with you. Uh, thanks. Thanks for your time. Cool. Uh, Rolling Stone described the album as the finest release by any of the four musicians uh, were once called the Beatles. Do you agree with that statement? or? Well, you know, um, I'll have it. Because, you know, they're going to say finest album and include me in the sentence. I'll go along with that. Yeah. Uh, you know, well, the nice thing about yeah. Band on Their Own was that we'd been trying to make something of Wings for a while, you know, and been trying to figure out where we were going. And we made a couple of albums and we played around a bit. But with Band on the Run, you suddenly felt like we got it. Right. You know. Yeah, so, you know, when we felt like we'd finally got it together, yeah. that was around Band on the Run time. You know, we it was a crazy album to make. Um, but, yeah, we finally made it. And so, yeah, if Rolling Stone says it's uh, the best, I'll, I'll we'll have take that. take it. Yeah, yeah. Why Nigeria? You know, I think around about that time, people were starting to kind of branch out. Um, till then, we'd all recorded in just the, the recording studio that our label had put us in. So mm. we were in Abbey Road all the time. Yep. Um, but this was now after the Beatles. And i say people were, were, were thinking of slightly exotic locations to record. Um, probably around about then the Stones were doing the South of France for other reasons mm. but people were moving around a bit and so I just thought well yeah it'd be quite quite good to go somewhere else so I got a list of EMI studios and they had millions of studios around the world and um, one of them was in China one of them was in Rio and they and then one of them was in Lagos and I just went oh Lagos wow you know Africa I love African music, just the rhythms and everything. Um, kind of thing that Paul Simon did years later with Graceland. Yeah, Graceland, you know. yeah, yeah. I just love all that sound. I was quite into all that. So I just thought that could be great. You know, if they've got a studio down there, it's probably quite cool. EMI, um, you know, would have a good studio, I thought. Uh, wasn't quite true. All right. So, but that's, that was why we chose Lagos and Nigeria just because it was an exotic location to go and just do something different. Did you get mugged in Nigeria? Were you at Knife Point or something like yeah. that? Yeah. Did that happen? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, when you get there, you kind of hook up with, like, people in the British community. There's always, like, yeah. an expat yeah. community in those places. And um, they'd said to us, well, whatever you do, don't walk around at night. You know, you're okay in the daytime, but at night, don't walk around. And we'd been to one of the mates' houses, and had dinner, feeling great. So it was just Linda and I, and we were then going to go home to our little place they'd rented for us. Um, and we said, oh, let's walk. And we said, well, they said don't walk, but there, they don't know. What do they know? Yeah. We know. It's cool. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's great. These are good people, and it'll be fine. So we were walking along, and um, it was quite, you know, it was quite sort of in the jungle. It was, it was a road, but it, but it was uh, not in a big residential area. And then a car just came up, and me, with the kind of Liverpool attitude, I automatically assumed he was giving us a lift. You know... So you, just hop, I, so you hopped in, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> no, so the, the, there was a few guys in the car, and but this guy sort of roll the window down, and, and I said, hey, man, thanks very much. I said, but that's cool. We don't, we're walking. We're having a great time. Lovely <laughs> night. And he looks at me a bit strange. He said, are you travelers? And I said, yeah, we are. <laughs> I wonder what he meant. Travelers, yeah, that's right. See you, man. Well, then they, it just must have flummoxed him. He just kind of drove off. But then about 100 yards later, the car stops again. And we caught up with him. And now one of the guys gets out the car. And he said, um, well, he's about to say something. But I go, look, you are so cool giving us a lift. I said, but honestly, we don't want a lift. Oh, We're right. walking. Well, I said, get yeah. back in that car. And I kind of bundle him back in the car. And he's like, <gasps> who is this crazy nutcase? So he goes back in the car. He's like, and all his mates, because they go, no, <laughs> mug him. Or whatever. <sighs> so anyway. The car drives off again. Now, the third time, 
Dave obviously thought, now, nah, come on, we've got to get this smug in together. So the, suddenly all the doors open, <laughs> bang, and they're all out. And there's like about, I think about five, four or five of them. And then there's a little one, and he's got a knife, you know. So we go, oh, they're not giving me a lift at all. They're robbing us. Finally, the penny dropped, you know. I'm going, oh, no. Uh, 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 what do you want? What do you want? I'm going, tape, tape recorder, camera record. Because we're walking around like typical tourists. We've got cameras, tape recorders, money. They took the tapes off you. You had to so they start took from scratch yeah. again. To uh, yeah, I had, wow. my, I had my demo oh, cassettes yeah, yeah. for the album. And I kind of carried that around with the tapes mm. and everything. So they took all that. Linda's screaming at them, leave him alone, <laughs> leave him alone, he's a musician. <laughs> I'm going, yeah, listen to her. Anyway, so <laughs> he, he didn't, they didn't do anything, they just got the loot, jumped back in the car and sped off. They got down, but not 200 yards, then the car stopped. I went, oh dear, you know, what is this? And he went, <laughs> screech, turned around and sort of went off down another road, they were going the wrong way. So then we went, right, walk. <laughs> Oh my God, they were right, we shouldn't walk at night. So we suddenly walked off, got back to the uh, house we were staying, immediately just got in bed. Uh, you wow. know, roll on tomorrow morning. And then we went to the, to the studio the next morning. And it wasn't great, it wasn't like sunny and clear skies, it was like torrential rain, I think it was a monsoon season. So we, we went through to the studio and the studio manager was a cool guy. He said, he said, you were really lucky. We said, why? He said, he said, if you'd have been black, he said, they might have killed you. Oh, wow. They would have figured you'd recognize them. He said, but as you're white, he said, they don't think you'd recognize them. He said, so you were lucky. We're going, oh, yeah, great. <laughs> so we were lucky. But they did take all the tape cassettes. And so I had to, like, remember the song. Luckily, I did. Yeah, just from scratch, lies. Wow. Yeah, I, I'd written them not too long ago, so I kind of remembered them, you know. So. Yeah, it did all right, didn't it? And it did all right. Yeah, it did. Yeah. Didn't 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 like did some band members walk out on you and just left you, kind of thing. Yeah. You know, like you, Linda, and Denny, just yeah. just just you three did it. Yeah, well, it was five of us: me, yeah. Linda, Denny, and then yeah. Denny Sywell, who was on drums, and Henry uh, on guitar. <coughs> and uh, one of those two guys rang up the night before, I can't remember who, who it was, I think it was Denny, and he rang up, he said, we're not coming to, to Nigeria, man. I said, what? <laughs> he said, we're not coming. I said, are you kidding? You know, da, 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 why? You know, oh, you know, don't fancy it, or whatever. So then I kind of had to deal with that, like the night before we're going, you know, it's bad enough, you know, getting yourself together to go, and suddenly two, two, two of your band aren't going. So I just, you know, thought, uh, you know, right, uh, what am I going to do? What's, what's, how do I deal with this? And I just thought, okay, what I'm going to do is say, screw you, I'll show you. Yeah. I am now, this is motivating me, I'm now going to make an album that you would die for. You're right. And you wish you'd come. And it was funny, you know, they kind of, not revenge, but something just similar. To, just yeah. like, I'll show you, you know. Because either it was going to be, oh, okay, lads, well, I'm really sorry, you know, we shouldn't go, we'll go to Abbey Road and do, make it properly. But, no, I just sort of said, no, no way, we're going, see ya, boys. And that was it. But now, years later, you know, they sort of said, I wish we'd come, you know. Yeah, because yeah, you, you, love, you love getting on the drum kit, don't you? You love playing drums, don't you? Yeah. You've got a thing for it, haven't you? I do like so, drumming, yeah. yeah. See, it goes back a long way, because in, in the early days, like in Hamburg, um, you'd sometimes be somewhere in, in the club and someone might not have a drummer. Remember one night, this guy Tony Sheridan, <coughs> we used to play with sometimes mm -hmm. in Hamburg. One night, Tony didn't have a drummer and he'd, he'd, he'd seen me messing around on the kit because, you know, if there's a drum kit going and, you know, you're in a young band, it's like, have a little go. And he thought I was reasonable. So he said, would you stand in for the drummer? So I did, you know. It kind of... I couldn't do... Uh, you know, everything. I couldn't, I wasn't very good on shuffles. Mm. I couldn't get that together. But just straight. Yeah. I, I, had, I had that down. So, uh, yeah, so it gave me a love for playing the drums. And when our drummer didn't come out there, 
I thought, right, I'm going to drum on this album and I'm going to show you, you know. Um, so, yeah, I did play a lot of drums on it. I played all the drums. Yeah. Did, did, you, did, you want, did you want Wings to be massive or did you just want it to be a, 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 just as kind of a small band, you know? Did you want it to be a really big thing, you know? I think so, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah, I want, I'm, I'm like that, you know, yeah. if I kind of get involved in anything, yeah. I want it to be a success, I think yeah. most people do. Yeah. Um, for me, originally, it was just to have a vehicle to kind of get on the road and to make music, to c c continue making music yeah. after the Beatles. Because yeah. it was either they just hang up your guitar and say, I don't do that anymore, and then do what? What are you going to do? You know, what are yeah. you going to do? So I just thought, no. And we'd seen a program of... Uh, Johnny Cash, who'd <coughs> recently got back on the road. I think he had Carl Perkins in his band too, so he had a couple of the, the boys in his band. And it was nice, it was just a nice little band. And I, I, I turned to Linda and said, do, do, do you fancy that? You know, we could <laughs> kind of do that. And she sort of looked at me and said, yeah. So that was it, that was the, the birth of Wings, you wow. know. We just found some people, we auditioned some guys, uh, I just found the list, actually, of all the drums we auditioned. There was millions of them in a, in a theatre in London. And some of them were kind of guys who, you know, played in good bands and things. And we just had a crazy audition. I just put them through a couple of things, mm. you know, to see if they could play that, play a shuffle, they could play this, play fast, play slow. Um, yeah, so... Uh, yeah, so we ended up with a band, and yeah, then I wanted it to be big. You know, I knew it would take a while, because yeah. we were starting from scratch. Um, the, you know, the alternative was to, to put together like a super group, but um, I didn't fancy that. It was just kind of too, I don't know, too something, you know what I mean? Yeah. Too easy or too flash or something. And every group I'd ever known that, that had done anything, had always just been a few mates from somewhere, and they just come up together, or they just learned it. And most of them started off not knowing anything. You know, none of them started off as geniuses. I mean, like when I knew George, we were just basically yeah, learning yeah. A and D and E. Same with John. You know, Ringo was just learning his basic stuff. You know, so then we developed together, and it was kind of kind of nice that way. So I wanted to do that again. But yeah, I wanted us to be big. If possible, please, Lord. I grew up with uh, Band on the Run. My mum used to play it Sunday mornings, every Sunday morning. She loves Bluebird, by the way. And uh, oh, yeah. how come the cover? What's the idea all about? You know, what, how'd that come about? Um, you know, the nice thing is being married to a photographer, of as course, I was, yeah, of course, with yeah. Linda, it'd be kind of something that... W and also, uh, I used to take, play a big part in the Beatles covers. Mm. It was part of the fun. Yeah. was when she'd made the album and got a title, and you thought... Right, you know, what, what's the cover going to be? Mm. So we were just sitting around and the idea came up that we, we should have a band of people caught in the spotlight, like the classic moment from an escape movie. Or, you know, the Germans have got the spotlight on us or whatever, you know, and they're all stopped frozen. We said we, could, we should recreate that. And then what was nice, then the idea went beyond that. It was like, well, instead of just getting actors or just having the band, of which there were only three, by the <laughs> way, yeah, it would yeah. have made a very yeah. big group. Yeah. We thought, well, we, we should just get mates, and just people, just try and make it interesting. And people then are going to have to guess who's on the cover, particularly Americans. I think UK people would tend to know mm. people like Kenny Lynch, but Americans wouldn't know who Kenny was. No. Uh, so there was that aspect. So we just rang a bunch of people. Some people we knew were in town, like James Coburn. And I'd run into James a few times, and he was a cool guy. Just rang up, hey, we're doing this <laughs> cover. <laughs> you fancy coming up? Oh, yeah, man, sure. You know, he's cool. Dude, our man Flint. Yeah, Chris, Christopher Lee's on the cover, isn't it? Christopher's on yeah, the cover. Yeah, Dracula. And that goes back, yeah, hammer, we, hammer we hammer met him um, <laughs> when we were making Hard Day's Night for wow. the Beatles. We were yeah. out at Twickenham. <laughs> film studios and you know that's the nice thing about being out those places there's other people making films you know so you run into the oh, Christopher Lee Drac yeah <laughs> oh no you know. yeah. 
because we'd, we'd grown up with him, yeah. you know. And he's a very nice guy. He was really, and he loved his music. So we had some good little music conversations with him, you know. Mm. And, uh, and he was around. So I thought it'd be great. Bring him, see if he'd do it, you know. Got to get a track on the cover. Yeah, got some mega. Uh, Park, Parky's on there, isn't it? Parky. Uh, again, we'd <laughs> run into years before when he used to work at Granada Television. Because we were in Liverpool, that was like the mecca, Manchester, where the telly was, you know. So we'd, we'd drive up the East Lanks Road to, to uh, Manchester and do our little telly shows that they'd have us on, people in places, the little uh, local shows. So we knew Parky. He wasn't a presenter then. He was a producer. We always thought he was like big time, you know. But he was a good lad and he was a laugh and we'd have a drink together and stuff. And then he showed up, you know, later as a big presenter in, in London. So again, it was like Michael Parkinson. Yeah, wow. get him on the list. You're going out on the road again, ain't you? And you're going to be playing uh, any songs from uh, Band on the Run? Yeah, we do Band on the Run itself. Mm. We do Jet. Jet. Do Let Me Roll It. Let Me Roll It, yeah. And uh, yeah, that's uh, nice to do live because of the guitar riff. Ding, 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 ding. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. just like kind of dramatic. It's amazing. Yeah. And the audience <coughs> likes it, you know, it's a nice moment. And then we started this year doing 1985, ah. which we never used to do. But that's great. I mean, I'm always a little bit skeptical as to whether the audience, my audience, knows these songs or whether I'm going to be forcing them on them. Right. But the guys in the band, I think they've got a better idea <coughs> sometimes, you yeah. know, than I have. And they say, no, they'll know it. Don't worry, you know, it'd be great. So we slipped it in, tried it, and it's gone down the storm. Wow. It's like it's one of the big numbers now. It's nice to play. The little piano riff, you know. It's good to sing, and it, it's got some nice bits in it. So it worked on, it worked on the uh, tour, so that's in the act now. Yeah, so those are the ones we do currently. Might have to slip a few more in. Yeah, why not? Eh? Are you, are you going to make another record this year, or, or do you have any... Any, anything, anything yeah, this I'm year just, or next I'm, year? I'm just thinking about it, you know. Yeah. Um, see, the thing for me was, whenever you wanted to make a record, whenever you were ready, you could just talk to George Martin. Right. And he was there as a constant figure. Say, George, you know, we, we're ready to come in the studio. And he'd arrange it all. Now that George isn't producing, um, it's always like a, it's a question for me. It's like, well, who's going to take George's role so I've got some good mates who are producers, you know, I'd, David Kahn I've worked with a lot, who I like working with. Um, but at the moment I'm just, I'm wondering who should produce this new record, so that's kind of holding me up. I've written a, a bunch of songs, so I will probably do something in the next year. Cal Calico Skies, uh, one of my favourites. Would you ever play that, would you ever play that live or you ever thought of playing it live? Yeah, we do it sometimes live. Oh, I love it, yeah. It's not in the set at the moment, but we have a kind of alternate set that we mm. do at Soundcheck. You know, instead of some people who don't yeah. show up yeah. for sound check <laughs> like you, yeah. there's people like me who are there all the time, like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah, no. no, 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 I just, I got... You know. Yeah. <laughs> no, um, we, a sound check's like another show for us. Mm. We, we really just, you know, we're actually just checking the, the things. And also the room, it's kind of nice to check the room. So we kind of, you know, by the time we get on stage at night, we sort of know where it is and now it's got audience in so it's like we kind of own the room I'm, I'm big on that I like to do that I don't like to just show up somewhere not knowing where I am you know so like oh. you <laughs> so so uh, yeah we, it yeah. ends up like as a as a mini show we end up kind of doing an hour, and we often do Calico Skies in that and also we do Mrs. Vanderbilt which is on Band on the Run and um, I'll tell you how that came about we were doing a gig in Kiev, in the Ukraine, which was a, a big free gig in the middle of town. It was like 350,000 people there, you know. Wow. And it was, it was a great night. But before we went, someone to do with the tour said they've had a poll online or something of all the Ukrainian people, and their favorite song of yours is Mrs. Vanderbilt. I said, what? My favorite? You know, most people have never heard of it. But they said, no, what it is, is there's a bit in it that goes, oh, 
Hey, hey ho. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah. said, and they love yeah, that. Yeah. They, they think it's hop. Hey, hop. <laughs> right. Hop. Hey, hop. <laughs> and apparently, like, during the kind of political unrest there, this was a little bit of a rallying call amongst the young people. Hop. Hey, hop. You know, so they did that anyway. They love it then, yeah. Yeah. So it really was brilliant to do. We're starting it off, you know, the minute we got there, they're all, hop. Hey, hop. So, uh, so we've kept it in, and audiences around the world kind of respond the same kind of way. It's so like a nice little chorus to join in on. Great. Uh, thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Lovely. Lovely to meet you, Paul. Yeah, thanks very great. much. Thank How's you. things with your band? Yeah, we're uh, well, everyone's just had babies, so yeah. I'm the only one to go. Is so it, not, are you? not actually get pregnant, but you know. No. Uh, but uh, well, that'd be yeah, good yeah, if you so, could. Yeah, it'd be great, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, we're going to make a record at the end of the year, so oh, yeah. we're four, four album. You got everything written? Sergio's just writing it now and, you know, just getting the parts together, so we'll, hey, we'll see. Great, man. Cool. Good luck. Anyway, thank you. Yeah, you thank told. you. Lovely. Thank you. Okay. Has he got the job? Yeah, we'll get that. pass the audition. Good <laughs> <laughs> <Can I? laughs> Cheers. Cheers, Stu. <laughs> 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 thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Paul. Oh, great. Yeah, thank, you. Great. thank you. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for you. Yeah, no, nice.